Hello and welcome back to the Life on the Wrist podcast. Today we are going to be talking about a couple of things that happened in the last week. I think one of the biggest one being the new episode of Talking Watches that was released. I did make a guess last episode on who I thought it was going to be. Uh, it was obviously wrong, um, but there were some really incredible watches that were featured. I also think that there was a really good conversation that happened um, with the new host, and so I wanted to kind of talk about that. Um, I'll talk about a new watch that was released sort of um, in tandem with this episode of Talking Watches, and then I wanted to discuss um, a watch that was released, a limited edition watch that was released that really um, I enjoy a lot because of my love for yacht timing pieces. So, last episode of the Life and the Rest podcast, I guessed... Uh, obviously, they had teased the fact that there was going to be a new episode of Talking Watches. They actually, ho- Hodinkee actually hosted a event, a live event, to watch the the episode in um, in New York City. And um, I guessed that I I thought it was going to be Eric Clapton. There was a lot of uh, hype around this specific um, episode, obviously, with the with uh, this live viewing, which was new. It was also their 80th episode of Talking Watches, which is a pretty big milestone um, in the grand scheme of things. And yeah, I guessed it was Eric Clapton, but the uh, everyone probably knows by now that the guest was actually Ed Sheeran, which was someone who many people had asked um, for many years to be a guest on Talking Watches. But there was an additional sort of flavor to this specific um, the specific episode, um, instead of being hosted by maybe someone, a familiar face, um, in the sort of, uh, company of Hodinkee, uh, John Mayer was actually the host of this episode, and the episode was an hour long, which was obviously, um, adored by watch collectors, because you can't get enough of people sort of talking about watches. Um, there were some cool pieces I'll, I'll mention, um, in this, um, and, uh, I'll, sort of go through them, but what I did want to discuss a little bit was the idea of the discussions that happened. So if you don't know um, John Mayer, uh, he's obviously a very famous artist, a very famous individual associated with Hodinkee. He's done two Talking Watches episodes of his own, and he really started the whole idea of speaking about to others about your watch collections and, and, and having open dialogue about, about watch collections in a way that sort of brings it, um, you know, allows people to participate in the discussion. And interestingly, Hodinkee decided to have him as a, as the host of this episode. Now, I don't know if this is a long-term thing, if John Mayer is going to be the host for every episode, but I do think that John Mayer does a phenomenal job of picking his words meaningfully and having a incredible discussion about uh, the things that he loves. Obviously, John Mayer and Ed Sheeran have a closer relationship. I think they're pretty good friends. So this discussion was very natural, very... Um, a very... Uh, uh, um, colorful discussion between between the two, and and it really showed that their passion for watches and passion for their friendship really did shine through in this episode. If John Mayer is the host of future Talking Watches episodes, I do think it will be a great success for the series because I do think he does it eloquently. Not saying that anyone else at Hodinkee doesn't do it eloquently. Um, I think there are many people who have hosted episodes and had great conversations about it, but I do think that. Um, being sort of tied to talking watches in a way where he was the first episode, he knows sort of the concept and, and, um, you know, knows watches like the, I mean, he, he's essentially an encyclopedia with, with what he, what he knows about it. Um, I think it's a, it was a great combination. One of the things that also really came out in this episode that I enjoyed and, and John Mayer sort of touched on this was the idea that, you know, Ed Sheeran is the perfect example of someone who collects watches that he loves. He does. You know, there was a there was a part in the episode where he sort of mentioned the idea that, you know, when people look to buy watches, um, a lot of the times they'll go, oh, okay, you know, I found this watch, I think I like it, but then they will sort of um, go and and ask um, ask the world what the world thinks about that specific watch, and and they weigh that as part of their decision before purchasing the watch, and John sort of described the idea that Ed Sheeran really is someone who will um, will not sort of look to, to, to other people's opinions too, too, too much, and he'll kind of buy what, what he loves. 
And Ed Sheeran, he, he, he's, um, he's an interesting guy because he kind of described himself as quirky and, or weird, I think is the word that he, he said. Um, but they described him as, 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 he described himself as weird, but I think it's just because he owns who he is, he knows who he is, and he, he sort of, um, uh, you know, uh, I'd say just 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 owns who he is. I think that's the best way of describing it. Um, he doesn't he doesn't sort of become someone else so that he can have a you know around other people. And and I thought that was um, a really nice way to sort of um, talk about this uh, this um, this collection. And and I think it really did come through in 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 um, in this episode. What was really cool is. Um, Ed Sheeran sort of described the, you know, a couple of the watches that he that he that he had, and one of the first pieces that he he got was actually a toy watch, which um, is this really cool uh, quartz um, watch that you can basically take off these rubber straps and exchange them for other colors, and I thought that that was such a cool sort of first watch. It was a toy watch jelly, and you know he described it as you know he would trade everything. He traded every watch he had at that talking watch episode for that if 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 he if he if he could. Another sort of example of how he just you know collects what he loves is actually a second watch, which is a Hublot Skull Bang Limited Edition that he bought for his twenty first birthday. Which was limited to a hundred pieces. It's this Hublot with this um, black dial, sort of gray skull on the on on the dial of it, and he bought it with his friend. Um, and he still has it today. And I think he sort of, you know, described the idea that, you know, I think a lot of people give this, give Hublot hate and, and sometimes it's warranted, sometimes it's not. And I, I think he, again, this is a watch that he would say he, he liked the look of it. And so he bought it. There were some other pieces that were really, really significant. I really loved the story about the Patek Philippe 5230G World Time piece unique that he had made, um, where he actually had his hometown um, listed on the dial, which I think is really cool. Um, I I think there's a lot of sentimental feeling that one gets um, from from the places that they came, especially when you have a lot of success in your life like Ed Sheeran had. And I think putting that on a piece unique is, is super um is super special. Um beautiful beautiful watch, uh incredible looking dial and movement. I mean the fifty two third or sorry, the fifty three twenty is a is a phenomenal piece. Um and he basically had the word London swap for Framlingham, which is I think quite cool. One of the watches that he spoke about quite extensively was the Audemars Piguet white ceramic QP piece unique that he had done. Um, he had this perpetual calendar made in uh, white ceramic and ha- it has these panda dial sub registers. Um, and then when you flip it over, the um, the uh, the rotor actually has all the all all the mathematical signs, which is basically a reference to the albums that Ed Sheeran has created up until this point. So I thought that was really cool. He also spoke about how he sort of went down the Patek Philippe um, perpetual calendar chronograph route, and I think he's, he's you know, basically probably got every single one of them. There's a beautiful 2499 that he showed, a 5004P that he showed, um, it, you know, the, 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 the watches that you would expect um, to be on the table. One of my favorite ones that he 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 showed was uh, actually I'd say there's two that were really my two of my favorite. He showed this really cool Roger Smith piece unique that he um, that he had done for his wedding. I think he has one and his wife has one, which is really cool. It has a cherry blossom uh, motif on it. But I really like the fact that they spoke about the Alanga and Zona Odysseus. I I think. Um, Lange, I've spoken about him a little bit, you know, obviously HSNY just had um, Willem Schmidt speak um, this past month about the brand, and I sort of covered a little bit of that on, on the podcast, but I do like the fact that he spoke about it, because I do think there's going to be more people who are involved in it. Um, last little quirky watch that I thought was kind of cool was the Tudor Black Bay Divide Tour Limited Edition, so 
Ed Sheeran had um, these limited edition Tudor Black Bays created with the Divide logo um, on the dial. And there were 80 pieces that were made and, and he, was, he gave it to the um, cast and friends of the tour, which I thought was really cool. Um, which is not something you see very often, these, these um, custom made uh, Tudor Black Bays. But what I thought was really cool as well is the fact that there's a little bit of a discussion about Tudor doing a limited edition for Facebook. And how I think there's been a couple that have surfaced on the, on the market. And I wouldn't be surprised if there are other um, limited edition tutors that have been created. Um, so it's going to be kind of a cool sort of part of watch collecting that I think people are going to dive into. Overall, I thought it was a really great episode. They sort of ended it on the, on a discussion about the, um, Ormapige concept with Spider-Man. Um, I actually didn't know that if you flip the watch, I didn't pay attention to this, but when you flip the watch over, you can actually see the feet of Spider-Man sort of dangling, which I thought was such a cool thing to call out and not something that I'd noticed before. Um, anyway, if you haven't seen that, go and look up a, a picture of the movement of this, of the Spider-Man, um, concept because you'll see the feet. And I actually laughed out loud when the, when they put the, the picture on the, on the screen, on the, on the video. One of the things that did come out of this um, episode was this Ed Sheeran Hodinkee G-Shock collaboration. So if you didn't know, John Mayer has been releasing G-Shocks in different uh, colors sort of related to this um, specific keyboard that he really likes. Um, and they were just released one, the G-Shock reference 6900 um, Subtract. It, it's got this really bright yellow color to it, which I think is really cool. Um, Hodinkee also announced that they are going to be releasing two other limited edition watches um, with different collaborators, one launching in November and one launching in December. So we'll have to see what those are. But I do think it's a nice sort of brand extension for um, those G-Shocks. And, um, you know, I think it speaks to, to who Ed, your, Ed uh, Sheeran is. And um, yeah, anyway, beautiful watch. All right, so the last watch I want to talk about on the podcast is... Um, a collaboration that um, was released uh, between Rowing Blazers, uh, Bamford, and Tag Heuer uh, Carrera. They basically took a um, one of the modern Carrera 42mm cases and they um, used the Heuer Yacht Timer sort of motif to um, change the dial. So it's got this sort of baby blue outer ring and then you've got Obviously, three sub registers: one in green, one in blue, and one in red. Um, and then the applied hour markers, Rowing Blazer name, Carrera, the Tag Heuer logo, are in blue. And then you have these bright red hands. It's really a cool um, watch. If you don't know, I'm a huge fan of yacht timers. I uh, one of my first vintage watches that I ever purchased was a, yacht, a memo sale yacht timer, and I find the complication really interesting and sort of aligned with a lot of my interests. And so it's nice to see that that um, this collaboration is sort of taking inspiration from something that I that I truly do like, um, and uh, the the watch that that was inspired that inspired this piece um, doesn't actually tell time. It's purely just a yacht timer, um, and I think that it's a phenomenal looking Carrera and a, a nice sort of um, mix of doing something in the modern era, uh, but taking inspiration from the, from the past. As long as you keep innovating, that's what I, what has to happen. Um, but I do think Takara has done that. Um, it's powered by the Hoyer 02 automatic chronograph caliber, which I believe is one of their in-house movements. Um, so that's, I think that's a, that's a, a nice sort of, um, sort of innovation, I'd say. Um, I think it was limited to 99 pieces, so I'm positive that by the time you're listening to this episode, you uh, they, they'll all be gone, uh, most likely. Um, but I do I encourage you to check, uh, check out the um, pictures of this watch, because it really is a beautiful piece. As always, I'll leave links in the show notes to all these things. If you haven't seen the episode of Talking Watches, I highly encourage you to do it. You will need a little bit of time um, to do it as it is uh, an hour long. I think it's an hour 15 or something like that episode. So um, yeah, put it in your calendar so you can watch it because it's a, it's a wonderful episode. If you are new to Life, the Life Learners podcast, be sure to follow us so you um, can be notified of every time we upload, but we upload every Tuesday if you wanted to know. 
Um, and if you have a friend who might be interested in a watch podcast, be sure to share it with them. It really does help me out. Um, a f- little bit of news. Um, yesterday, when this podcast will be released, was drop day. So we've released four new pieces. I won't spoil it in this episode. I will talk about them next episode. Uh, but we are releasing four new uh, watches that we're going to be covering on the website. So either head over to lifeinthenorse.com to check out what those are, or you can stay tuned for the next episode of the podcast where we will uh, talk about each of them. Uh, We will have individual articles uh, about each of the watches as well as individual videos so you can see close-ups of the pieces and, um, and, uh, you know, hear about their histories and such. Um, so stay tuned for that over the next couple of weeks. With this said, guys, if you feel generous and wouldn't mind rating this podcast, it really does help me out. And um, with that, I think we will close out the episode. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of the Life from the Nurse podcast. And I will talk to you in the next one.